Right. Uh, welcome to our new conference and new coaching session on a very important topic. These paradigms are the game changer. So uh, I believe that everybody is listening me properly and uh, also my video is okay as well. So if somebody um, is not able to um, hear me, then please let me know. And uh, we will be starting right now. So I want to show you uh, just a quick... Right, so we are going to cover this very intense coaching session. So welcome everyone to on the board. And uh, my name is Maratib, I'm your host, and uh, I'm a presenter. Uh, through the presentation, we will go and put the insight on each of the topic and uh, some of the key insight related to most of the um, points uh, related to the paradigms. So let's start it. Uh, before starting the session, please consider that the privacy of the others. And uh, also you can take the notes and uh, you can make uh, many questions. You can make uh, um, any comments on, on the things which we, I will be discussing with you. And also, if you have any question, uh, you can raise the hand and uh, until I will finish the specific section, then I will request that mute all the mics all the time. However, you can uh, live your video anytime. Ratubai, can I so, just mention something? Uh... Uh, your uh, voice is not very loud, so if you can get closer to the mic, uh, that will be helpful, yeah. maybe. Okay, yeah, sure. Now it's better? Uh, it's still the now same, it's I better? think. No. Uh, is uh, anybody is hearing my voice uh, lower? Uh, is it okay? Yeah, think, because... Yeah. So uh, might be if we will uh, go in the session, then the voice will be much better. Okay. Uh, so let's carry on. So first of all, who is this session for? So anyone who is a truth lover or, or a reality seeker, um, who, who wants to really uh, love brainstorming and discuss about, uh, there is a distortion. Uh, um okay this session is also who love criticism and uh, always challenge their thoughts and ideas which you have learned um from your childhood till today uh, this session is who wants to make the difference uh who l wants to change the direction of their life uh in terms of uh, personal development in terms of uh, business uh, spirituality uh, money making, uh, relationships, anything. So you can get a lot of things uh, uh, from uh, that from the, this session. Also, uh, um, who wants to discover their voice? So many people they know that they lost their voice, or uh, they uh, their actual real voice is uh, mixed with many other ordinary things. So this session will help you to. Uh, discover your voice uh, as per Dr. Stevens uh, habit number eight. Uh, uh, Mr. Afzal, I think your voice is uh, coming. Uh, if you can mute your mic, Mr. Afzal. Yes, thank you. And uh, also uh, the people who are a great reader of seven habits of highly effective people. Uh, mostly our audience in these sessions are from the Facebook community of uh, 
Dr. Stephen R. Covey's book. Uh, so let's start it. Uh, before going understanding the paradigm, I want to discuss about uh, five age of civilization, uh, which we have witnessed in in last couple of uh, centuries and even thousands years thousands of years ago. So thousands of years ago, we were in hunter and gather gatherer age, where we used to hunt and just eat and uh, it's like a caveman, we used to live in a cave. And uh, at that time, we were not really a good communicator. Uh, actually, on that time, the language is also not constructed. Uh, so that age uh, was hunter and gather age. Then we later in, in the age, we became uh, farmers and we start to harvest different things and uh, we become farmer and we start to produce the food of many people at the same time. And we learn farming. And then we all enter next in the industrial age, which is after ad advent of the machinery, tools, and uh, also the pre-modernization uh, and a lot of other things. Uh, we, we've done this. This is the age, uh, you can say, when the French Revolution or uh, Roman um, downfall start, uh, many Muslim civilizations start to downfall. Uh, but the French Revolution, American Revolution, uh, Chinese Revolution, there are many revolutions were taking place. But the age which was uh, developing on that time was industrial age. And then la in last 100 years before, uh, almost the information knowledge worker age, we, we have witnessed. And actually we are still passing in this age and uh, it's going on. And uh, the next age, which we will also witness um, in the next uh, 50 or 100 years, or even many people are have the mindset of age of wisdom. So why I'm showing you these age, a, ages and civilizations? Basically, these all five ages are the five different mindsets, are the five different uh, school of thoughts the people were used to um, think about the uh, certain aspect. Imagine in hunter and gather age, how the people were used to uh, write the books or sharing their any thoughts, even when they were very in early stage of language formation. Um, and later when the religion came, Christianity and old uh, uh, Greek religions and then Islam and then uh, uh, before Islam, then Judaism and then Hinduism, then Buddhism. So after that, the former age came. So actually all different mindset transformed into the next age and then to the next age. And the mind start to develop and new subjects, new knowledges, new information and modernity uh, we, we see uh, in, 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 the few, in the past. And we will continue till next 100, 200 years or even our next 1000 years. Why I introducing this? Because it helps me to understand the concept of paradigm in a deeper sense. So basically, uh, the paradigm is, is a result of our attitude is, and how the attitude is, uh, is formed on the front, our behavior is working. And uh, every civilization has certain behavior. The people of that, these certain- You can actually mute the mic yourself. So go to where the green yeah. bar is and just actually mute or eject the person from the meeting. 
Yeah, uh, I think I did. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you very much and apologize for this inconvenience. Uh, we remove uh, that person. Uh, probably they are um, trying to de de uh, deviate our attention uh, and it's really annoying. Uh, we really apologize for this. Uh, so, and what is our behavior? Um, that is also very, very uh, common and uh, uh, concept we, we know all, uh, everybody. So basically what happens, our behavior forms our attitude. And when both behavior and attitude combine together, that actually form another fundamental uh, concept that is called paradigm. So paradigms basically are formed in our mind and it shows to the outer world in form of attitude and then behavior. Uh, so that's a very quick, uh, quick way I, I can uh, tell you. But in actually what the paradigms mean, the paradigms are infinite ways of seeing and perceive, perce perceiving the objects, people, processing, phenomena, world and life, etc. So how we perceive the world, how we understand different things, what's going on around us, that's all, uh, all stored in our mind in, in the ways, in a different ways, and we call it paradigms. And uh, they are actually mental maps, which we uh, create or our society forms in our mind when we were in school age, when we were uh, in college, or when we were uh, in later stages in our life. And how we project our perceptions and thoughts as a result of our uh, nurturing our emotional intelligence and a lot of other things it involves to forming our paradigms. So basically, uh, these are two ways how the paradigms either come from outer world to inside me and sometimes my own natural genes help me to form positive or um, victim paradigm, uh, paradigm. So I will let you know uh, in, in further um, in few minutes that what are the uh, positive and the victim paradigm. So whatever the paradigms or ways of thinking comes in our mind, these are driven forces. These are uh, basically are action oriented external or internal forces which helps us to helps us to uh, derive our uh, our daily agendas weekly or monthly agendas or uh, we are responsible of our behavior what we do so um, also we can um, like uh, most people's self maps, which we call paradigms, are functions of the social mirror. That's a very famous quote from my uh, uh, favorite author, Stephen Covey. What does it mean? And what does it mean by social mirrors? Social mirrors uh, are those things which, from which we perceive and we think that the reality it is because other people are doing this or are other people are saying this thing. So these are all called social mirror. And what we, we do as, as a result of social mirrors. So for example, if somebody is in New York, is doing something and he born there, he is living from last 20 or 30 years. And now he is acting like a local 
American in New York. His attitude, his behavior will be mostly the function of the people, all other people are living in New York because his attitudes will be influenced under the other people's behavior, thoughts, and, uh, uh, and uh, there are so many other things. So, and that's how our paradigms are also formed, how we, uh, we are driven by paradigm, but also under the influence by external world, which we see and which we perceive. So it will be more clear where, uh, what will be uh, meaning for this. So let's uh, understand for this as well. So it's another saying of Stephen Covey, all of us think we see the world as it is, but we see the world as actually we are. This is a mind blowing uh, quotation. And uh, we actually think that what I'm seeing, I'm hearing, I'm thinking, I'm touching or sensing the way as it is actually, and we call it reality. And we think this reality is universal. So for example, there is a piece of paper in my hand and I'm touching it. And I know it's a, it's a piece of paper and it's, it's a little bit plain. I, I can feel its sensation. I know what this, this is for. And I'm also assuming this is the thought which is universally accepted and everybody have the same feeling and everybody uh, will say it like a piece of paper. But actually it is not. It is my own self reality on, uh, only. And uh, somebody came. So because who taught me that this is a piece of paper and it is a very smooth surface which I'm feeling. And uh, how I know this? Because from my childhood or from my nurturing in the school or my parents told me that this type of sensation is, is soft and very alluring and is different than the other surfaces or other uh, object experiences, isn't it? So, but the main point is the actual thing, actual reality is not like this. Everybody in this world is different and their upbringing and their parents, their towns, city, countries, cultures where they're born, everything is different. And uh, when they experience the same objects, their also experience are different because of paradigms in their mind. So I will explain you these things further as well, uh, because there are so many examples. I will, I will uh, show you and you will be understanding properly about this. So another quote from Stephen Covey is, so people live up to the social mirror that surrounds them. Very much, uh, very much, it's, it's the same thing which we, we were trying to discuss, that uh, uh, we do what we, we, we see in our society. For example, a, in today's world, the coronavirus uh, or COVID-19 is a, is a social reality. And uh, even I did not see coronavirus, I never see any victim of coronavirus in my neighbor, but based on certain uh, societal, societal actions, I made a mental map about, I have to be very careful and I 
I need to stay away from stranger. And then I start to build up my set of expectation. Yeah. So, but this is a common thing which I can experience because in every country, COVID-19 is influencing negatively. Okay. But what about those things which are very locals? For example, uh, Ebola virus or any other epidemic only in, let's say, in one of the country in Africa uh, or Australia were there. Obviously, I cannot understand what is this. And uh, I cannot experience the way how Australians are experiencing the same thing because their paradigms will be different and their actions, behavior and attitude about certain things will be different than mine. And maybe uh, in the COVID-19, all people are not reacting or responding in the same way, is enough. Like many people take it slightly, very, very softly. Some people are very serious about that. Some people are just in some conspiracy theory. Some people are taking in a different. So why everybody is taking COVID-19 in, in almost in a different way and responding in a different way? Um, in many countries, um, like for example, in Middle East or in Africa, Af Africa or um, in India or in Pakistan, um, or in other in, in China, the people are responding in a different way because they have a different paradigms about the concept of epidemic or concept of uh, fatal viruses or infections which create the infection. So uh, this is a very obvious quotation that people live up to the social a mirror that surrounds them. And uh, uh, let's, let's try to understand further about, uh, about uh, paradigms. So paradigm is actually uh, the mental images of the things, of the way things are, and how these are, uh, these uh, forms and construct actually comes from our background, our own experiences our set of expectations about everything yeah about everything and uh, why there are cultural cultural differences because of our bringing because of background uh, our ethnic background our uh, racial background our co uh, qualificational wise our professional background our uh, our bringing background so so background is a very subject and very vast topic because they are different to everyone. That's why everybody has very unique paradigm or different paradigm. So I'm not talking about a right paradigms or incorrect or wrong paradigm, just the paradigms. And, and, and we will also work on how we can go towards the accurate paradigm, how, a, paradigm should be. These will come later, I, I will explain you. But just we will be doing little brainstorming about how the paradigms are actually. So um, let's go further. This is also Dr. Stephen Covey's famous uh, quote, we see what we seek. And uh, um, I was uh, uh, not understanding this, what does it mean? We see what we seek. So actually what we seek, we see. And how we seek, because our mind paradigm wants to see it, because we have a certain set of expectation in our past history, in our background, in some part of life or in age, we have experienced this and we see because what we are seeking and that's how the reality we form and we see 
and uh, people actually want to see what they want to see and if they don't want to see they don't see and uh, where our attentions are going on we are focusing and that becomes a reality for us uh, and that's is unique with everyone so that's why everyone has a different reality experience and in my point of view there is no point of conflict or point of quarrel or fight between two people about how they are saying this is a thing and how i am saying that these are the same thing in a different way so actually because of the formation of the paradigm everybody has so in this point of view everybody is it's right at their own place in certain aspect in certain way so there is no no point uh, and that but because of our thinking pattern which i will let you know about linear thinking and third alternative thinkings and the two way thinking because of our thinking pattern we this agree with other about same thing uh, and uh, why we do not make it as a productive thing for beneficial for me and for other because of our egoistic approach because we think that my experience my set of expectation my background is superior than you and your you do not know the reality what i know and the same thing other person is thinking about me and how it there is a, a, a conflict a permanent relationship breakups it happens in husband and wife relationship um, it happens between boss and the employee it happens between every relationship which we have in our Uh, life and they break there is a, a very tight and chaos between relationships because of ignoring this aspect that because everybody has a different paradigm we cannot change anyone to follow my paradigms or my way of mental images how i'm perceiving the world it cannot happen so the other person you either try to force to follow me or just there will be a mess up relationships so that's how uh, it's it's going on let's go further and uh, i will let you know about how uh, more things will go so uh, paradigms are assumption of the way the things are uh, that that's uh, i i already uh, discuss about uh, in the previous slide uh, Uh, it is also a famous quote from the thomas cohn uh, that uh, all the significant breakthrough were breaks within old ways of thinking so remember um, i show you the five age of civilization and also if you add advancement to the next generation how it it's it updated to the next generation how it forms the old way of thinking into and transformed and this transformation goes into modernity of that a next generation that's all due, uh, due to the um sorry, due to the uh, breakthrough of the uh, into in the breaking the old paradigm or maybe incorrect paradigm you remember um, once the people used to uh, think that our mind we think by heart have somebody know about this old people in ancient time people they do not know they think by brain they think they are think they are thinking they and feeling by heart and the later after many centuries they transform this paradigm imagine if somebody is saying uh, i'm thinking from my heart uh, or, and heart is somewhere in my my chest and they don't know about their brain 
how this civilization will be working. Imagine this, it's, it's quite funny, but these were the old way of thinking, how um, we used to think. Um, the same thing is about Aristotle. Aristotle uh, used to say uh, how the germs, uh, there is no germs, and uh, how the people die because of the diseases, because of some supernatural forces kill the people. Uh, and, and they used to do some remedies to uh, fix the physical issue of the people. Um, but they didn't know that every disease is caused by bacteria or viruses or germs and which are very microscopic view. So then um, in two, three hundred years ago, this paradigm was broken down by a scientist ready and uh, and uh, a new paradigms of diseases came. No, every disease is caused by certain very microorganisms. So can you believe that we have to change our paradigms? We have to follow the next improved paradigm in order to um, leave and avoid the old paradigm. So that's how we are progressing in our way. So if somebody has any question, please let me know. I will are happy to take your questions as well. And uh, uh, whether in audio or video, uh, you can, you want to do. So Albert Einstein uh, also say, the significant problem we face cannot be solved at the same level of thinking we were at when we created them. And uh, I remember um, like uh, 10 years ago, I used to do running and I thought that the running is the best way to fit. And you can maintain your weight, you can maintain everything, you can be slim. And so that was a paradigm. Uh, 10 years ago, I used to um, used to follow. And now, if I will follow the same paradigm, it doesn't mean that I will be slim again, or I will um, I will be very fit. Probably, I I won't able to run now. So I have to do something different to achieve my fitness. For example, maybe I have to uh, uh, change in my diet or I have to change my thinking pattern of, of becoming a fit person or I have to join other things as well. So, so these are the paradigms. Once you make, uh, it doesn't necessarily that it works all the time. And uh, that's how is a beauty of this uh, this world uh, we we do. Uh, so let's discuss quickly about a few paradigms um, and uh, which we have. For example, a very famous uh, and very obvious uh, paradigms uh, and belief system. We talk about the God, and every religion or belief system in our society, um, in history, they talk about God. And God and its theories, its all propositions, um, all literature related to God, religion, Can I that's, that's all paradigms. Yeah. Uh, I just would like to ask, what is the difference between the paradigms and the myths are uh, popular in our culture, in our society? are in our surroundings. Yeah, uh, paradigms and actually every myth is also is a paradigm. So every myth which we have made for ourselves or we perceive or learn from our society is a paradigm. And sometimes it works or sometimes it, it, it does not work. So, um, uh, and 
it could be inspired from ancient religion it could be just a superstition leaven baseless un, uh, uh, unscientific uh, way of thinking pattern or action we do but these are also paradigm uh, so i will let you know about which paradigm will be more accurate and how we can follow them that's the whole point of our uh, this session is so thank, thank you. you for asking the question so uh, the same thing is about germs theory the germs theory uh, like i said uh, that that diseases are caused by small insects and microorganism before it it ha people used to consider that diseases are just uh, uh, are the different things and uh, uh, maybe the wrath of the god or some agendas from the uh, evil have possessed uh, that person and uh, we have to kill that person otherwise this uh, this um, uh, possession or this evil will transform to another person and you know the how it, it, it was a different way of life and culture and now we know that even imagine if uh, we were living in 500 years ago and coronavirus uh, used to spread so imagine what we will we will be doing i'm sure that we will be killing each other and uh, i mean the blood set and uh, uh anarchy and uh, the peace in the society will will not be even 1% achieved everybody because nobody knows that what is going on and uh, and uh, i'm killing because i met with that person and that person has a possessed evil uh, spirit that transformed to me and so so that's i will i i deserve to kill you and uh, that will multiply in a whole society and whole society collapse and totally die that but due to the scientific paradigms which we have learned so we now know 100% that these uh, respiratory diseases are due to some uh, viruses and uh, how the coronavirus is impacting us negatively and we are very much uh, positive about that rather than to uh, to do some negative actions so this is a uh, advancement and the beauty of how we can follow accurate paradigms and think positively work positively so um there are many paradigms when we from the childhood we know that um who i am what is life why i am here um what is the purpose of my life um everybody has a different answer for this why everybody has a different answer because everybody have a different experiences um in their childhood from their parents from their grandparents um somebody taught different thing they learned in the school different thing and that's why they everybody have a different different uh pattern of thinking is you know it's very interesting um because uh, so is is very very brain um i mean a uh, brainstorming type of thing um for for being actually for everyone who is sincere and uh, who wants to uh find the real reality 100% reality um many religion and philosophies science they also try to answer these question or many hundreds of questions are these so and why everybody is answering because everybody has a different things um for example these are different philosophers have different way of um beliefs 
different ways of meaning of of the things you know these are absolutely different paradigms and uh, what is money many people think the money is evil um many people hate rich people uh many people love money many people think money is a, um is a is a life blood because we buy things due to this money and stuff so everybody has a different thing you know nobody's right nobody's wrong you know uh think um how what what do you think about money um and do you think that the how you perceive the meaning of money is exactly how i am thinking about money is it possible um so no because uh, my are bringing my paradigms are different than you so the same thing about equality gender equality uh, or these type of things which we do um these are old due to the different paradigms you know um we have a big war between uh, men and women um are mostly decisions in the world are due to we think that um men are different uh, women are different whether it is right or whether it is wrong because of and many think we are superior we are superior that's all because of paradigm so let's have a look that uh, what actually paradigms we can understand now so actually the paradigms are mental maps paths perception set of expectations to guess one's own reality more accurate that map is more great decisions or actions or attitude will be seen as a reality and vice versa so that, that's the how it is let's go further about in a in a more deeper way that what are the paradigms so um yeah we have a paradigm related to all these things what is universe everybody has different understanding of uh, universe what is house who i am who self is a very very um complex paradigm which we have uh what is knowledge for me how society is work what is society how life came what is actually life relationships family so everybody has a somehow different meaning of this are these meaning which i have in my mind through maps are right or wrong we don't know and uh uh that's the uh, that's the quest we need to do um now it's a very important uh, section of uh, how paradigms are formed or constructed so before we go to this uh if anybody has a question or any thought what we have discussed so far you can type your questions as well or uh, any thought as well i'm happy to read about them as well right so let's learn little bit about how the paradigms are formed so paradigms are formed actually because of two two aspect one is nature or natural or other is nurturing or uh, from society and uh, um what do you think 
which is more stronger, which is more responsible for forming or constructing our paradigms in our mind? Nature, naturally, we uh, we th the things which we have, or society nurturing our parents, our grandparents, media, politicians, everybody who is in the society whom I'm interacting and I, I watch them, I listen to them, they are responsible. So do you have any, any idea? So let's, let's explore it. What is nurturing? Nurturing is your childhood, your parents, people around you, society, your country, through which you develop your social mirrors and you copy them. Yeah. Why I'm doing uh, uh, this job, why I'm doing this degree or diploma, because I saw someone in my family or in my society, he did, he was, uh, got the admission in, uh, in university or in institute. And after that he or she did uh, this job and and they were successful. That's why I'm doing this as well. So we follow mirrors. We are repeating the things in our society. Everybody is repeating every other things. So um, nothing is also conscious learning. Like right now we are doing a conscious learning. We are learning something. We are thinking something uh, consciously. Um, within available things, resources, people you live with. Yeah, everything is contributors in developing the paradigms. Emotional or social intelligence, a huge uh, responsible for paradigm. Schooling, huge uh, factor are in, uh, influencing ourselves in, in nurturing. And everybody, uh, and many other things are uh, responsible for forming whether a good paradigm or productive paradigm or negative or victim paradigm. That's a different thing. But these are uh, they they are doing. So let's uh, go for further. What is nature or naturally we do have genes. Our grandparents. Race, maybe, as many people believe. Reproduction, how we can reproduce our replicas in terms of children. Planet, we, um, where we are born. We, like we are born on Earth and we are living there, here. Uh, atomic theory, like we know that every Everything is made by atoms or molecules and compounds and mixture. Um, these are natural things, yeah? So, and are they responsible for our paradigms? Nature, nature or nurture is a very debatable question, but many people think that nurturing is more responsible or always responsible, or nature is responsible. Because if nature is responsible, then nurturing does not work because nature is something permanent, which you can't do against the nature what has designed it for you. For example, many people uh, think that our genetic, uh, genetic material has everything what we will do or what diseases I will have or what I have done is due to everything was written on a code on my genes. That's the assumption or is, is not a fact at the moment, but it is a paradigm which we know. So what do you think uh, if I ask everyone that do you think the paradigms which we take action or we think about certain things which is more influential and why 
I, I think that uh, nurturing is the more uh, more responsible than nature because the nature we can't change and the nurture we is a changeable. The paradigm we have in our mind because the paradigm are such a thing which are the changeable, we can change them. In, if we if we look at the nature, we can't change the nature. But if we look at the other way around on the nurturing, we can change the nurturing. And by changing the nurturing, we can change our paradigms. Yeah, yeah, very much. Uh, yeah, this is a brilliant uh, um, answer for this as well. Is is somebody is. Uh, supporting the nature is more responsible for our paradigm because we can't do anything uh, because nature has decided everything by the way nature is also uh, you can add the god like god is responsible for everything because i was born by god so god has uh, programmed in me everything so that's why i'm uh, i'm uh, i have this thought and blah 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 so uh, let's go further uh, about there is another paradigm that you are not even uh, due to nurturing or not not due to nature. Actually, you there are paradigms which are by choice. Like consciously, you focus and you learn them, and you made your mind the way. Uh, it should be, or we can say it more accurate paradigm pattern. Like Dr. Stephen Covey, um, in the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People book, he talks about principles and the different paradigm we should act in our in our society to get a successful or being a more effective person. And uh, they say we need to follow principle. Yeah, we don't need to follow what the nurturing has done or what the nature has done. That's fine. But what we have, we can do, we can do by choice, and that we can do. We are responsible. So um, these are also principle based paradigms. Are, uh, are like uh, mental intelligence, experiencing spirituality, explicit learning, conscious, consciously, we think that this is good or right on a broader level. Um, everything is designed to follow. Um, universal principles and law we need to follow. So uh, these will also come at the end of this uh, slide. Uh, because we need to cover a lot of things. Uh, um, so thoughts comes before feeling, or feeling generates thoughts. This is also a very important question. Um, so imagine any pain or any feeling which comes in our mind, how, how does it come? Uh, how we know that this is a painful or this is a playerful thing? because society has taught us right and how society has taught us through language yeah for example if i um i put my finger on a burning uh, surface so i will feel a pain ouch yeah and uh, how i learned this i, I this is a ouch feeling um because my parents or grandparents or my people or carer, they taught me or maybe I, I learned from by seeing other person, yeah? But imagine if other person, you don't know any other person, or you don't know what is pain actually, you never, you are speechless, you are, uh, sorry, not speechless, you are languageless. If you don't know any language, you never learn any single word even. And then you burn the fire, uh, you put the uh, hand on, on a surface. Or even you don't know if this is a fire. You don't know even this is a finger. So 
what thought will come in your mind or what the feeling will come in uh, you will feel see it's it's very tricky it's uh, very very tricky and uh, because we know the language we were taught the words and sentences that's why we are repeating we are continuously repeating because every word has a certain paradigm yeah due to language but like we are speaking or we learn english um, we know french spanish german language arabic language uh, or many other languages and every language has words and every word has a meaning and every meaning has a certain paradigm see how deep these paradigms are and imagine if that meaning of certain thing is incorrect the whole sentence is incorrect and whole sentence which is in your mind as a paradigm will be incorrect and imagine due to this incorrect paradigm if you take any action or make any decision what the consequence of this action will be just disaster and you will become a failure person in the because of incorrect information or incorrect way of thinking pattern you have in your mind so look uh, this is a very crucial and very sub, uh, important and complex as well i i give you another example of the tree have you seen the tree uh, let's uh, uh, okay what is this this is a tree how do you know um well this is uh, i know from my childhood my teacher mm -hmm. told me my my grandparent told me that this is uh, um a tree okay how is tree look like well it has a typical shape and things thing thing and it has a purpose and blah 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 so all these paradigms we have formed in our mind yeah imagine if this tree was told you in your childhood is it is a book so how you will have a incorrect paradigm will be in your mind and that's how it is happening that we don't actually understand the objects and words in a deeper sense and in a accurate manner so we have a incorrect definition and meaning in our mind and that's why our behavior are different so that's why the language also plays very important role the words the sentences or speech what we are listening that must be very quality related stuff and because it is forming our paradigms and based on these i need to take action i need to make some decision and these action and decision will be collapse and will lead me towards failure if these are incorrect yeah so that's why language is very very important in forming the paradigms that's why in schools um, teacher more assertive about language speaking or learning reading writing because everything you are building right from the childhood from the school level. that's why how paradigms are important and language is very important is it it's very cool so uh now the question is can we live without language so for example uh, 5 10000 years ago when there was no language or maybe 50000 years ago when man used to live in a cave and he does not have a language as such this language and he does not use to word or st stuff so 
imagine that time they were more in peace than today because we know so many hundreds of thousands of words and sentences and all the time these thousands and words and and five senses all combined together and making continuously generating thoughts in our mind continuously even we are sleeping we are waking every time so that's why um, uh, we we have to be very very moderate on our language we need to have command on this language and uh, and there are many other things as well. so another concept are the every paradigm is like a cloud like i have a definition of certain things or i am in a cloud yeah and for example all american things like almost in the same way yeah all uh, british people or uh, or any other nation or countries people think in the same way about their like national security about phenomena of economic progress about uh, a certain aspect is it because they have a common cloud of thousands of millions of people yeah and imagine that american if that british person or that any other country man goes any other country and start to live there it's very difficult to live there because every definition the quality of thoughts will be um, uh, compromised on in other country and that's why uh, it's very painful when you migrate to somewhere and you have to uh, compromise on your previous country's thoughts way of style culture in the next country because the, here the cloud or paradigms of the life is different than other other uh, other country i'm not talking about the this country culture is wrong or this country culture is right or superior no no i'm talking about just how the countries uh, are nations are forming and because of their different paradigms and uh, uh, and we are stuck in in that paradigm you know see and we we have to um um and it's very difficult to come out this paradigm throughout the life because we are stuck we have a very limited definition of certain things and we think that it is a world and and all the time we are in shaky and uh, we are and we are going to fall um and uh, everywhere people paradigms are paradigms yeah one person has many other paradigms as well maybe this lady has lived in two three countries and three two three cultures and uh, and knows two three types of political system uh, or economic system and and she's uh, she's still locked and many people have the same paradigm so, so, so few of the paradigms i can tell you man and woman is a different paradigm capitalism and communism communism yeah matter and spirituality country and the country like country versus other country so every everything is a is a different paradigm you know some more paradigms we have in our mind god and devil success and failures human and animal animal and birds see everybody has a different definitions you know 
on a collective level we know that all what is success is or what is god or what is human or what is animal but in a deeper way everybody has a different definition of human success god animal wild animal versus and pet animals uh, these are very different some some um, more uh, paradigms were earth was the center of the universe and somebody say no only man is the center of the universe or sun sun is the center of the universe and so on and they were very influential in their uh, in their generations hundreds of thousands of years ago these were all a uh, locked paradigm these were all locked they could not come out from this paradigm like i said before many people even did not know that that they have a brain and they think from this brain they they thought that they are thinking from from here somewhere in chest and uh, look how their action could be on that time you yeah. see uh the same the newton and einstein physics uh, are very different because of the different paradigm and then later in a latestly uh, even einstein uh, einstein uh, philosophy of physics is replacing by quantum physics or mathematics hi hi christian you want to say something okay maybe so so, so we have a certain aspect of uh, like man family children house car business job industry so everybody um, has a different paradigms about these things uh you know everything is different nothing is common to be honestly on a broader in a deep deep sense so that's why how you are unique see so what you say and think it becomes reality and placed as a paradigm in your mind see so look at the example of this tree so you, you were told that this is a tree but if you were told that this is a book so forever throughout your life you used to say oh this is a book is it not how is it that simple but at the same time it's complex how it could be the sensitive we have to be careful when we are learning some concepts but we have to learn in a deeper way more accurately because all are storing in our mind in a form of paradigms which paradigms are right and wrong now the question is we are just in the last uh, um, phase of our uh, of our presentation just i think 5 10 minutes more we will leave so now the question is which uh, paradigms are good or bad uh, like i said I i'm not here to tell you what is good and what is wrong yeah because everybody has a different definition of good and everybody has a different definition yeah but i will tell you a broader perspective Uh, for example some paradigms are victim paradigm and some are, are positive paradigms so you know the how the people are thinking how the people thinks uh, in a two way like day night good right good and uh, good and bad right and wrong um man and animal god and devil so it's it's, it's called duality we we learn the things in a dual dual way yeah d u a l um 
so but is it this paradigm is accurate is there any third type of or new duality uh, uh, reality is there yeah possibly possibility there is uh, any other thing exist between good and bad maybe between god and de devil there is any third thing is or fourth thing is there or fifth thing is there yeah so but here i'm trying to say you is a victim paradigm means we think oh uh, why it is happening to me i'm very good i always i i'm a very innocent and i never be harmful to for other why why this happened to me you know see this is a victim paradigm i have in my mind so i'm thinking that i'm a victim but there is another paradigm if something happened to to that person he or she can stand and face that challenge and become responsible be become more proactive to cope the issue rather than to feeling having a feeling of being victim see so uh, for example abundance mentality and scarcity mindset this these are the paradigms also this is a very positive paradigm and this is uh, a negative or a less uh, or a negative or victim paradigm you know how the powerful paradigms are path of greatness and the path of failure so if you have a path of greatness all the time in your mind uh, yes nail you want to speak i know that's okay so path of failure see Uh, there are uh, uh, early in this uh, presentation i told you about linear thinking or two way thinking oh, or third fault um sorry say again sorry. yeah you have any question nile hart no not not now i just oh. uh, alert my wife that i'm busy in uh, the, this okay, uh, okay. progress sorry no problem thank you so they, uh, we have also linear thinking or authoritative way of thinking two way thinking where we have a clash with other uh, people third alternative thinking uh, which is also a great way of thinking so all these type of thinking have a different paradigm you need to decide which you need to think uh, which you need to choose you know see like uh, i most of the time in my life i choose this way of thinking rather than just a linear thinking one way or two way yeah or maybe there is fourth alternative or fifth alternative thinking but at this time we only know there are two three types of thinking we have at the moment some people Gosh. think that the mm -hmm. some people think that the change is outside in approach and some people think change is inside out approach you know okay, that's okay, how yes yes please that linear thinking can you just reiterate the linear thinking please yeah um let me show you yeah linear thinking is a thinking that um i know everything and uh, um for example i know what is black and white and uh, that the people are considering that uh, uh, i know what is wrong what is right what is wrong what is right um and like uh, he is absolutely 100% confident with poor knowledge with less knowledge and uh, that is called a linear thinking and mostly people who have a authoritative type of mindset they uh, have a linear thinking 
means they don't include other people's opinion in this they say they know everything so whereas the other way of thinking is two way thinking uh, like if i have a thought or opinion about certain thing then my partner or my boss can also add their point of view so this this becomes the two way thinking you know two way thinking mindset that something i will say something my my husband or my wife will say and we will all together make a decision this is a two way thinking and other and the uh, next is the third alternative thinking means it is not your way it is not my way it is a higher way let's do something which is i i will not follow you you will not follow me even we will follow third thing that is called a third alternative and through which we also produce synergistic amazing solution well this is another topic so this is a general uh, uh definition of all this linear thinking yeah so uh many people think that the family is liability sure and uh, many people think that no family is a strength yeah so many people think that customer is is for money and some people think that no customer is for service we have to serve the customer to make them happy to provide them our service or product and many people uh, think that customer is a just a money these are the two different paradigms so that you need to decide which is a productive paradigm or which is a less productive paradigm but i just would like to ask one thing about this third alternative here yeah? third yeah. alternative of thinking uh, you know when you having a argument with is the is the is the mindset or is a kind of person if they having argument with some and uh, they would like to they, they would like to go uh, and find out the reality so they is the they they thinking what what i am thinking what you are thinking maybe you are right maybe i am right but let's go together and we find out the reality is the something third alternative yes yes this is the third alternative um the best example is for example uh, you have any issue at the workplace and uh, your manager or boss ask you to do this or to find a solution and he boss or she boss uh suggest that this is a solution but you are in this you are in this agreement and uh, but you are in this agreement uh with your boss and you have any other solution yeah now he is locked in his paradigm of of certain solution and he your boss is also locked in his paradigm and there is no other way where we can go further so there is a third alternative that not the boss or manager's way not the employee way but there is a synergistic way which will uh, be decided by both parties and that is called a third alternative and there is there is a process dr steven has written up a dedicated book on the third alternative thinking entirely it's amazing book uh, where you you can solve any problem in your life and due to uh, uh, due to following of the third alternative and after this third alternative thinking what we achieve we get synergy and synergy is a miracle so see how changing of thinking paradigm we can make our life in a miraculous way and mm-hmm. uh, I, i will explain you this how this third alternative thinking process happens 
in, in any other of the uh, uh, session. But that's how our, uh, our paradigm helps us uh, to go and move forward in our in our life. So uh, and the book, yeah, the book name is the third alternative, the solution of problems of of people uh, by Dr. Stephen Covey. Uh, sorry, once you repeat that again, the third alternative. Yeah, the third alternative. Solutions of the problems. By Dr. Stephen R. Covey. Uh, and this is also related with the habit number six, which is a B synergize. Uh, so now the, uh, we are we have a five minute and uh, we will want to discuss about how we can help ourselves to construct most <clears throat> accurate paradigm. So now the question is. Yeah. So now the question is how we can construct most accurate paradigm. Anybody has any uh, any thought on this? Um, yes, Christian. Uh, can you mute your mic, please? I will. We will appreciate you. Uh, can I mention something, or somebody yes. else would like to do? Yes, Mr. Ibzal. Yeah. So, how we can uh, uh, construct our a correct paradigm? Uh, I think there's uh, there's not just a one single rule or one single principle where we can uh, uh, correct our paradigm. There is number one by in, by increasing our mental intelligence, getting getting more information, getting more knowledge, and that knowledge should be that, that knowledge should be a realistic, scientific approach based, and uh, uh, the the uh, it, it should have some some uh, you know not not some but it should have the consequences, the uh, correct consequences, what we are uh, reading, what we are learning. So basically, the realistic approach by improving uh, and increasing the correct knowledge, uh, we can correct our paradigms. Absolutely, amazing. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's an excellent uh, uh, answer. Uh, one of the answers, excellent. Any other person uh, can add how we can build or learn to make accurate paradigm in our mind? Let's go uh, what we have. Um, let me see. Yeah. Uh, these are some of the things I have recommended here. Number one is deep learning and deep learning. Get at the bottom of the things. That's the number one thing. So, and uh, actually we, first of all, we don't learn in our daily life. But if we learn, we learn on a very superficial level, on a very ordinary level. Yeah? We don't actually go in deep depth of the things. Yeah, uh, that that's our attitude and behavior is, is very pathetic. If we want to work on to forming accurate paradigms and we want to become a successful and right person, then we have to learn deeper and deeper and deeper because reality is hidden inside, yeah, not on a superficial level. We only know that uh, tip of the iceberg we don't actually know the whole whole iceberg. So that's the number one recommendation. Number two is 
lifelong learning subjects, books and events we need to engage with. So lifelong learning means exactly what you are doing at the moment. Like you are not in a class, you did not pay us, you did not uh, uh, like, a, like a school boy, but you want to learn this thing out of the way. And uh, uh, this covers in the lifelong learning. Or if you buy the book or many books or CDs or follow any audio or video or, or certain YouTube channel, then this is the great way to improve your paradigm by learning and low lifelong learning. Watch and learn longer videos. This is very important. Can anybody tell that why we need to watch longer video? We need to watch the longer video because the long video will tell the exactly the depth of the topic. You know, uh, we have a very um, uh, disappointing uh, habits nowadays on a YouTube or on social media that we just see few clips or listen something for few minutes, few seconds, and we think that we know that thing now. This is absolutely not acceptable. We have to go bottom of that topic. And you need to have a habit to watch or listen the things till it's finishing till maybe it take one hour, half an hour, two hour, three hour, four hour. That's the habit make your paradigm more accurate. Yeah, otherwise you will have an inaccurate paradigm in your mind. And then based on these inaccurate paradigm, you will make decision and you will be failed. Also, if you uh, experience other paradigms, so if you have a cloud or certain cloud and set of paradigms, that's fine. But if you go to other person's paradigm, that will more help you to broaden the perspective of the paradigms. Yeah. So that's why you have to meet many people, many teachers, many books, so that your spectrum of thinking become broader and you can learn more easily and more accurately. That's very important. Next is follow universal principle based paradigm. Yeah, universal principle based paradigm, which Dr. Stephen emphasized in the books, the seven habit, eight habit, that we need to follow universal law. Like harvesting is a real key of success. Hardworking honesty, integrity, truth, uh, trust. These are all universal things and the values, universal values. If we follow and take action around these things, then more likely we will be successful. Because all these things have a more or less same definition across the whole planet Earth. So everybody knows that what is hard, hard working mean? What is smart mean? What is a, um, a fit or fitness mean? What does it mean by wise nutrition? What does it mean by um, like success or become a financial independent? So talk and learn the common things which everybody has. Yeah, or, uh, so that's the how we, we can uh, broaden our perspective of paradigm. Also uh, follow third alternative thinking pattern like we have discussed already. Think more about I, who I am. Think about yourself, who you are, why you are born, why you are in this, world who you are designed or you are just by chance here or you are nothing or you are something so more you will go in these things more you have a great spectrum 
yeah think also the thing out of the box so that's also very important so these are some recommendation i do to you uh, uh, and the, you 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 can involve in this and it helps you to improve to adopting the accurate paradigm yeah so what do you think the paradigms are really game changers or something else which is our title or if you have a paradigms in your life or if you have wh what does it mean are they really game changer will you work from now to broad the spectrum of the paradigms about everything so if you have learned something incorrect you can make the decision today that i will learn everything by learning bottom of the things and more accurately yeah and uh, follow the certain things which you can find also some of the recommendation i have told you already and uh, that's it so any question or thought that was my presentation um i hope you enjoy or learn something so let uh, me know if you have any question yeah Pratima, is it uh, possible because you know the slides you were showing during this lecture i try to make the notes uh, but is it possible can we get the email of those slides please yes yes why not why not i will um i will email uh, um uh, i i can invite for for this all uh, coaching session in a uh, google classroom software and on there um we can um, share this slide or video okay. where you can access this slide all the time so yeah that will be great if yeah can, no uh, very welcome so uh, can i ask a question quickly please yes please uh, i just want to know whether the your presentation because i di i didn't follow the whole one i came in late halfway through the presentation i just wanted to know whether the whole presentation that you did this evening covers all seven habits or aspects of seven the seven habits of highly effective people yeah i know uh, we we did not uh, discuss about our um, our topics of all seven habits uh, we discuss about just the idea of paradigms because the seven habits we cannot understand uh, until we really understand what our paradigms mean because dr steven has written those seven habits and the eight habits to change the paradigms and if people don't have understanding of paradigms in a true sense then obviously it is difficult or more time taking process to change the habits so maybe in next presentation i uh, we can every week we can uh, discuss about one habit particular habit number 1 habit number 2 every week or every next week uh, but uh if you are interested i can make next week another class another coaching session on only habit number 1 and uh, if you are interested okay. then we will um um i, I will also uh, share a slide for this and you can also watch this recording on a youtube okay uh, this yeah, presentation so, yeah presentation so uh, are, are uh, you that my my second question is yeah. um uh, on guidelines concerning how to transition from an inaccurate paradigm to an accurate paradigm yeah uh, uh is that so, a, is that a fair question yeah it's a fair thank you very much it's a great question um 
so the, these are the some thoughts which uh, i i say that you you need to follow these things and uh, i believe you will have a more accurate paradigms uh, from inaccurate to accurate paradigm for example you need to uh, read books you need to watch longer videos uh, you need to follow principle based uh, paradigms or laws you need to follow third alternative thinking pattern uh you more think about i who who we are or you more uh, think out of the box so uh you you can also learn more philosophies you can also uh, learn more religious or a sacred literature as well that's okay. also give you a more accurate paradigms as well so there are different things you can try and uh, uh actually that's our approach how we see the world and how uh we can learn more accurately okay so th- there Thank is no that, uh, response yeah no so th- these are the things you can uh, uh you can try and more importantly you can read more books more books okay. meet with authors so, meet fine. with big people and that will help you to make your accurate paradigms so in other words these eight principles i counted them they are eight kind of steps yes to enable one to transition from inaccurate paradigms to accurate paradigms that's correct it they will help you definitely okay they will help you Very much for that but you need but you need to decide as well that uh, and you need to have a skill to evaluate your current paradigms that are my current paradigms or thoughts about particular things and objects and people or events are accurate or just it's a, it's just a repetition in my society i know this because somebody is doing this or somebody said this only because of this or it is really this so question hmm. or question about your thought uh try to challenge your thoughts and then find the answer so for example if somebody is believing on god and because all people are believing on god that's why you are believing on god so you hmm. can challenge this you can say why i should believe on god is really i need to believe in god and find it answer and then create accurate paradigm the same thing mm. is about money why everybody hate money or why everybody loves money is it because everybody is hating or loving the money or it is your own deep rooted feeling that money is good or money is evil mm. how you can say so you can say is if you are reading books if you know that the money is can be good for people if uh, if you know that the money can be used in a productive work or in in a welfare work you can say the money is a great source to uh, bring the happiness to the whole world so there are many reasons you can uh, put in your mind and start to earn money mm. so ra- mm. rather than you are, are, are earning the money just because other people are earning the money so that's why the questioning is very important challenge mm-hmm. your thoughts yeah yeah so th- that's why I, uh, it is very important to check and evaluate the paradigms all the time okay. all the why i am believing yeah. on why yeah. i am believing is it really i should believe on or it is i am believing because my parents told me or my mm-hmm. friend told me or my relatives told me so question about that redefine the things reconstruct mm. the things mm. and then uh, that will lead you towards the accurate decisions and taking the accurate actions 
Okay. And that's why I got the Thank you. You are very welcome. About uh, social mirrors. Uh, if you can explain about the social media, is that something you are looking the people in your surrounding, in your uh, society, or is it other way around, around the society or the other people are uh, looking at you? What are these social mirrors? Social mirrors are all sayings and actions and habits of your people around you which you start to see and you start to project these things in your own life. And you make that decision and you make the pattern of your living based on these mirrors. So mirror means I see my life in my society's mirror. So you know, sure. when you go to the toilet and there is yeah. a mirror, yeah. So what do you see in the mirror? You see yourself in the mirror, right? So what does it mean by social media? Literally meaning you are seeing that I am the society and society is going in this trend and you are deciding I, I should also go to this trend. So mm -hmm. without any your own personal need, you start to blind follow the society blindly. That is called social mirrors. And we don't, we have to avoid social mirrors. We don't need uh -huh. to see our, our life in what the society is looking. We need to decide what is best for me. Because my personal background experience is different. My paradigms are different. My priority is different. My everything is different. Then why I should make decision based on what other society uh, is asking me to do. Okay, so basically, is you are looking in the society, what way the society is going, what they are acting, what they are doing. So they, we, you should not follow those things. You should be setting your own patterns, your own paradigm, your own research. If you are, if you want to follow the society, so you should ask your question yourself. Why I am. Why I am following this society. That's correct. That's correct. So, for example, um, I told um, if we remember that 20 years ago, everybody started to do uh, and learn and earn the degrees of uh, MBA and MCS and IT and stuff. And even anybody does not have this aptitude, their parents start to force the people to do these degrees, let's become IT expert and become successful. Let's, uh, let's learn the degree of doctor or becoming an engineer because everybody's becoming doctor and engineer. So this is called, we are following social mirrors. We have to avoid social mirror. We need, need to choose the profession, which I am passionate about. Of course. Mm. Yeah, and so, I, so th that's the whole point is so okay, thank you. We need to self centered, not the society centered. The society centered. I hope it clarifies okay. you. That's very kind of you. Thank you. I no problem. Uh, no problem. Thank you. Uh, so okay. at the last, uh, uh Hopefully, I can see you next time and uh, we will send you the invitation for the next week, uh, a new coaching session and with my new presentation on a topic of interest uh, of uh, both of us. So thank you so much and uh,